Bawa ba Shem, Yahweh Shai ba Shem, Rakapa Dash. Say understand. I overstand. Okay. I ain't under nothing. Okay. Have you heard of this? Before? Yeah. I'm not saying it. I'm just. Yeah. I know Israelites. Yeah. yeah. But to to be under is to have a foundation. I ain't under nothing. Yeah. But to be the under, under is under, to under, have umbrella. a foundation. Foundation with who? You talking about? When you're Ever? under, you under, have a foundation. Listen, what I'm saying. You, you Anything you under, you have a have a, have a foundation. Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brother, yeah. I ain't on the Can you go on this nothing. side because you in the camera? Can you go on this side, okay, please? Okay, the camera okay? Oh, you put the camera on me or no? No, can you go on this side so the camera don't catch your voice that much? Oh, okay, I'm trying to okay. teach. No problem. Yeah, just tell me, tell me yeah, my voice. Right here. Sit right there. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. My voice. Without the camera, you can hear my my sound kind of like my mouth. Like sound. Remember, you don't you tune your guitar. That's the number one thing that we do. You don't tune your guitar up, you're out of river. Father, I be scroll. I be scroll. Second Ezra 15 and 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and the destruction draw nigh. Right, so the Bible says it's prophesying of the time and it says woe. That's the very first word in that phrase. It says woe. What does that represent? A great destruction to come to America, to this entire globe. It says woe to them. That dwell therein. Go ahead. For the sword and the destruction draw nigh. Right, so you have to remember, Ezra wrote this at a time in which he never heard of or seen a gun. Okay, which is so a modern day weapon. You, you should wait until listen, the man finishes listen, speaking. Listen, listen. Okay. You have to wait right, until right. the man finishes speaking. Right, I understand. I'm going to answer your question because that's why we're here. Yeah. I got you. I promise. No problem. I no problem so, now what he's talking about is a future time that he's getting. A vision from the Most High that's talking about where people are going to be killing each other with the modern day sword, modern day weapon, which is the gun. So we keep going on. You have a question. You have a question. When you say time, time is the essence. We create time. Like a watch on your, if you had a watch on your, watch created by you. If you create the water, time is created by the most high. Time is the essence. If you're not going to ask the question, I'm going to speak over you. If you're not going to ask the question, I'm asking the question. You're speaking over your question. My question was you said something about time. I say time is the essence. It's not a question. Keep reading. It's not a question. Keep reading. Read over. It's not a question. And the destruction John like the sword and the destruction of people in this world is coming very, very close. Oh, okay. Very near. So, so it's very sword. important. Sword You're still anything. speaking over me, so I'm gonna speak over you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 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 Thank you. I'm standing right here. Be respectful. It's yeah, all right. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't saying it. Right. 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 Listen first and listen. in order to well, ask the proper question. No, don't do You're talk, still don't speaking over me. We're right. talking, we're talking and to one people, people should stand, stand up to yeah. fight yeah. against another. It says one people shall stand up to fight against another. These are the times that we're coming into. Bros ain't just coming out here because it's a fun Saturday and we happen to be in the shade right now. This is a very important prophecy that will come to America. The only way to be safe during this time is to have faith in a higher power. You have to know those true names. That's why we're coming out here. The answers or the things that should be coming out of your mouth is, what are those names? How do I get protected in that time? When is that time coming and how do I know? Those are to be the proper questions, things that pertain and relate to salvation. None of this bullshit matters. I don't need to know about the goddamn watch and how it dictates yeah, time. Look, look, you know look, why? It doesn't matter. It doesn't it, matter. Right, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Only things that pertain to salvation. If that's not what's coming if out it, of your mouth, if you ain't saving nobody else, you ain't saving nobody. Go over. Keep going. And one people should stand up to yeah. fight against another and swords in their head. Keep going. For there should be sedition among men and invading one another. This whole entire world, they keep talking about shit that's irrelevant. 
it doesn't matter. That's why I think that we don't hang around people too much out in this world. Mm -hmm. They too worried about the NBA and shit like right. that, the drafts coming up, preseason football. Gosh, All that shit is fun. Gosh, Ooh, what is it going to do for you when you can't watch TV no more? Kind of when the phones don't kind of work? Kind of when the internet is out? These should be the questions oh, yeah, coming to our mind right now. That's all that matters. People are going to be standing up and fighting against one another. Those are the things that all you other camps should be talking about too. Y'all not warning the people though. And the pastors of hard been making hella videos about it lately too, talking about the karate. A lot of y'all camps, y'all leaders, y'all got blood on your hands. You're not warning the people about these things to come. Keep going, bro. They, they should not regard a kings nor princes, and the course of their actions should stand in their power. Right, the course of the actions should stand in their power, meaning what? A great example is what's happening over there in California right now. They got retail theft on a rise because yeah, they came come. out with some kind of dumbass decree saying yep. you're not allowed to mandate anymore the retail shoppers to stop these, uh, these robbers coming in. Yeah. Now, of course, naturally, if I'm the goddamn cashier and I see somebody robbing a Nike store, I'm not going to walk over there and try to stop them anyway. But when you make a decree like that, it puts it to people's mind like, oh shit, you know what? Ain't nobody stopping me. And now my fuckers is going into Nike stores, Nordstrom's, no mask. They got trash bags in their pockets, going to the store, whipping out the trash bags and dumping bags of clothes in the trash bag and then walking out like this, just marching. One, two, one, you know what I'm saying? They don't, they don't care about the cameras and shit like that. That's the time that we're coming into. That's why the Bible calls this the beginning of Jacob's trouble. All these things is happening right now. It's only going to get worse. You see the decrees that Esau is making? Isaiah 10 and 1, somebody. Go ahead, go ahead. This is the book of Matthew chapter 24, verse 1. And Yahweh went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Yahweh said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? That's perfect, right there. Because what his disciples say, they inquire, they ask the question, something that pertains to their salvation. What's going to be the signs of these things that you're talking about, my Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai? That's why I was very particular about not saying that name in front of that goddamn demon. And that's all you have to do, just talk over these people. The word is going to come out regardless. We're not asking the right questions. We're not up here to waste no goddamn time. We're not going to waste no brother's time up here. More importantly, we're not going to waste the Lord's time. This is the altar coming to make a wrong sacrifice. Those are the questions to ask right there. What's the sign of your coming, O oh Lord, so I can prepare myself? I need to know, please, know what you're shot. And he laid it out. Matthew 24, verse 4. And Yahweh answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Hamashiach. Right, you got all these false teachers out here leading our people astray. And that's okay, because if you're a part of the elect, you're going to find who's actually speaking the true words of the Lord and who's not. Like the scriptures talk about, you follow the leader into a ditch, well, all right, cool. That's your problem, that's your fault. So you got many people out here, really what that's going into as well, is false anointed. You're not anointed to speak. Who gave you that uh, authority for water? Because you went to some kind of goddamn school, all of a sudden now you have the uh, authority to speak about these words? Nah, you can tell who has the authority because they're going to be talking about prophecy, things that will come. And all you have to do if you want facts, just go back years ago. There's still old videos up. There's not many. You still got old videos up, though, of like seven, eight, nine. Back in that time, the apostles and the elders talking about the Karagi, talking about how there's going to be diseases and stuff like that. We all lived through COVID. We've seen it. Go back and watch the videos. They talked about it. That's how you really know who's a real prophet. Yeah. Matthew 34 and 5. For many shall come in my name. 
saying, I am Hamashiach, and shall deceive many, and ye shall hear of wars, and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Right, we're going to pause there and jump to Isaiah 10. These are the things that the Lord said to look out for. Wars and rumors of wars. I say it all the time. I'm going to keep saying it, Lord's will, until the internet gets taken away. Go to Google, put in any word that the Bible talked about would be happening. I guarantee you, you find articles one hour ago, one day ago, three days ago. Type in World War III. I bet you you'll find articles of a day ago. Type in diseases, plagues, sicknesses, robbing, stealing. All these things the Bible talked about, it's going to be in here. We all know what just happened to Maui over there. That, was, that goddamn looked like from a, a bird's eye view, the lake of fire. That's exactly what it was. Now, what's ironic is I made a video about that yesterday. Then this morning, Apache Kahar made a video and he called um, America Big Mouth. That's how you know we all in the same spirit. But that's all John seen was a bird's eye view of America burning on fire and it looked like a lake of fire. The Lord gave us a great representation over there in Mount. That's what's going to happen to the entire world. Or to America. Now, before that though, the priests will come. That's what we're getting into with California. Read Isaiah 10. Isaiah 10 verse 1. Woe unto you that decree unrighteous decrees and then that break Britishness which they have prescribed. Right, now that's what's happening right now. We're seeing this prophecy being played out by these unrighteous decrees. Like I mentioned, just to reiterate, over there in California, they came out with a bill that says, now workers over there, y'all can't mandate anybody to stop these um, people coming in these robbers, right? Whatever the proper word is, theft. You can't stop it. So now retail theft is going to rise over there in Cali, every single store, all the time, everywhere. So many videos about it, what's going on. That's the one white people One more time. Isaiah 10, verse 1. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees, and them that write Britishness, which they have prescribed. I mean, I haven't even looked into it all the way, but it sounds like if I work in a retail store in Cali just in and I do stop one of the people, there's probably a punishment for me. I don't know. That's kind of what it sounds like. Though. Either way, what he saw Eden is doing is he's enticing theft. He's influencing theft to happen. And why? It's never just going to be one county or one state. If one state did it, you know damn well the next state is about to be down the same thing. So now we're going to have this trickle effect. And then all of a sudden, second number six, let's jump over there. Um, like, uh, what, what's that scripture from Mario talks about how it's going to hit harder and faster? 30 feet around there. Go so around there. Yeah, we're just telling our people that we're Hebrew Israelites. That's all. But you can read that book. Second Ezra 16 and 32. And the earth should be laid waste, and the fields the rush should wax old, and the waste. happening on a very large scale and these things are only going to happen faster and faster and they're going to hit harder and harder meaning what in terms of america the economy is going to start crippling at a greater and faster and harder rate 
the entire kingdom of America will begin to fall faster and faster as the prophecies continue to unfold. And they're going to have a greater detriment on your personal life. That's what this is talking about. So now, knowing that, you have to ask yourself the question once again. What do I do to be protected in that time? How do I make sure that my family and I are safe in that time? The only way to receive that kind of protection is by a higher power. His name is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai. That's the only way to be protected. Reading. Which pains when the child coming forth, they slack not a moment. Right, it says those pains, they slack not a moment. Meaning they're going to hurt. You're going to feel these pains. We already felt part of it during the pandemic. Now watch when another shutdown happens. People are going to go ballistic. People are going to go crazy. We were talking about it at uh, one of the Wednesdays camp. But basically, they said that domestic violence increased like 60% during the pandemic. Because people were just at home, they were tired of it, they were sick. You're living with the same people, they're annoying the hell out of you. And then all of a sudden, you just get the beating down because you know how to take out your anger. You can't go nowhere. That's going to happen exponentially again in these times to come. Keep going. Even so should not the plague be slack to come upon the earth, and the world should mourn, and sorrow should come upon it. Well, I think as of right now, America's economy has already been, or its infrastructure is already at a great peak. It's just declining over the years. And it's obvious, you can see it. The streets are all messed up, the buildings are worn down. You can even, not even the freaking inf uh, infrastructure. Just look at the trees, should it bloom in the way it was no more? Temperature is all out of whack. It's hot as hell every goddamn day. I won't be surprised if you get like a 70, 80 day, you know, in November, December. It's gonna be crazy. The Lord is gonna do new things in this earth. That's that, talked about. It's gonna be new things. That's if we in November. Exactly. We may not be in November. It's all on the Lord's time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And that's the case. Because we don't know. That's why you can't wait. There's no such thing as waiting, because guess what? The Lord ain't finna wait for your ass. He not finna wait for nobody. Keep reading, finish it out. Even so should not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth, and the world should mourn, and sorrow should come upon it on every side. Yeah, it says that sorrow should come upon it, meaning the world, on every side. North, south, east, west. Just because only America that's prophesied and the, the, the Holy Land right now to be completely destroyed. I don't mean these other countries not going to feel it. Now, pains are going to come on every side. Moab, you're not exempt. Ammon, none of y'all niggas. Y'all lands ain't exempt. Y'all going to feel it too. It's going to hurt. And when the uh, Babylon starts crumbling, that's going to affect all these other economies too. They're not going to be able to thrive the same way. You're not going to be able to sell your goods over here to America and then ship the money back home. It's not going to work like that no more. Every single place is going to go down. It's going to be a very large crumbling on a macro level. And that's exactly how the reason and why Yahweh Shai is known as the King of Kings. And, uh, what's happening right now is a total destruction of this current world that we live in. And Yahweh Shai is going to declare war when he returns and establish himself as the top. Look at Isaiah chapter 10, verse 1. All went to them that decree unrighteous decrees and that right grievousness which they have prescribed. Exactly. See, and like we mentioned, that's what's going on right now. Those unrighteous decrees. It's only going to get worse. You got certain states now where they're trying to ban the Bible, taking it out of the school system. It's only declined. Years ago, they used to say the Lord's Prayer in the school system. They don't do things like that no more. Now, all of a sudden, what? You can't call nobody uh, up the wrong pronoun. You call somebody the wrong pronoun in a certain state, you're liable to get jail time. All these unrighteous decrees is basically the opposite of the heavenly father. What he said was right. Now he saw us saying, no, that's wrong. He saw us saying, we're the God. What we say goes, what we say is right. Those are his unrighteous decrees. 
And the number one unrighteous decree is him mandating that for That's what's coming. Because he's trying to establish him as the God of this world. And he's trying to make it him say, come to me as your Lord and Savior. Come to me and I'll give you shelter. Food. I'm going to offer you protection. All the things that a deity or a God is supposed to give to his people, that's what we saw saying he's going to do if you take back the run. That's the number one unrighteous decree. Now let's jump back actually to uh, Second Ezra 15. Second, second Ezra 15 and 18 and 17, a man should desire to go into a city and shall not be able. But because of their pride, the city should be troubled and the houses should be destroyed and men should be afraid. Right. Men shall be afraid. I love reading down to those last few words. Men shall be afraid. Everybody thinks they're all high and mighty right now. Everybody thinks that that guy, they're so freaking tough. Well, you just wait until Esau comes in your neighborhood with AKs and cannons and shit like that, tanks, and it's now a military state, your so-called peaceful neighborhood, where you was a man on the block. It's not going to be like that anymore. The time is coming when you're going to need a higher power to ensure your protection. You're not going to be able to save yourself. You don't know, no matter how big you are, how strong you are. You can be the goddamn Hulk. It's not going to work. The Lord is going to take down that nigga. <laughs> He's going to take down anybody. Right? Unless you have the angels protecting you and watching over you, you're going to be through when these days are coming. You're going to be done. Read that last verse again. Second Ezra 15 and 18. But because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. Right, and it gave us the reason why in the very first sentence. It says because of their pride. Now what we can do is we can link that sentence to Malachi 4 and 1. Because of their pride, it says. Pride, proud, they go into the same uh, kind of definition. Thinking that you're high and mighty. Thinking that you are God. People say only God can judge you. They don't even believe in that. Because when God does judge you, all of a sudden you don't like it. Now you mad about it. Well, why he doing that to me? Blah, blah, blah. I thought only God could judge you. Now you want to lie about it. <laughs> Malachi 4 verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud, yep. yeah. And all that do wickedly shall be stubble. Shall be stubble. That's very literal. This ain't no metaphor right here. This isn't an analogy for something spiritual. No. Malachi said all the proud and all the wicked, a.k.a. that pride, is the reason why this fire is coming. But he said they will be stubble. They shall be stubble. It's not a metaphor. People are going to get burnt alive out here. It says the day is coming that shall burn like an oven. The whole oven gets hot. It ain't just one part of the oven. You turn that thing to 400 degrees, everything in there is 400 degrees. The whole land of Babylon about to get cooked. It's about to be hot. That heat is coming to this place. It ain't going to be some rivers and some small streams of water that gets to last. We ain't going to be able to jump in the water like over there in Maui. That shit ain't going to happen here in Babylon when the missiles drop. You think you're gonna be able to withstand the heat coming from the chariots? Are you gonna jump in the water? Yeah, all right. <laughs> we'll see how that how that plays out for you. Or a lot of y'all talking about, I could just pick the Quran out. We'll see how that lasts for you too. Dumbass. And then a plague on the head of them because they took the goddamn thing. People, they think that they can project and they know what to do in these days to come. I don't know what the Lord got planned. We barely even know what the Lord got planned. So we only have an inkling of his mind right here. We're just telling you a little bit of what he told us. That's it. You don't know where you finna be. I'm gonna protect my family. How do you know, nigga? You don't know that. You could die and then they could be saved. I'm gonna protect my family. You protecting them when the crowd get eaten by a dog and shit. <laughs> you like, run, run! <laughs> you know? Looking stupid. You know? Dog, eat your ass, cut up to your wife, eat her dumb ass too. Barely. Yeah, you barely escaped. 
Think that they got salvation already. You got your goddamn mind. You don't know what the Lord got planned. You don't know if you're saved. Let's finish out 2nd Ezra 15. 2nd Ezra 15 and the 19th verse A man should have no pity upon his neighbor, but should destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods. Because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Yeah, let me clarify. Nothing is wrong with running, I'm just going to say, this thing of ours as like a business. Because it can be uh, metaphorically related to one. But the thing is, we're living in a time in which even a top dog has to put in some work. That's all it's coming down to. Like, the, like, things are being built up. The best way I can word it is like this. Right now, through the Holy Spirit, we're building up the kingdom of heaven. We're building up that third temple, right? And it's not by our own means. The Lord is giving us the uh, opportunity to do so and the power to do so. But you don't rest. Even the, the CEO, he doesn't rest until the business is, is finally flourishing and it's where they need to be. Like, we're still in that round stage, that seed level, where work needs to be put in, sweat equity. You gotta still work late hours, you gotta work on your business plan, get your marketing strategy right. Like the CEO is not just sitting back and doing nothing at this time. That's where we are right now. Everybody should be hands on, doing something, working towards that penny. And this is the reason why. If you can read that last verse one more time. Second Ezra 15 and 19 verse. A man should have no pity upon his neighbor, but should destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. All right, so how can our business be established, aka the kingdom of heaven, if this is prophesied to happen? This is coming to the world. It says a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. That's in the Bible. The Bible is talking about how people are going to be destroying each other. The Bible talking about how people are going to be destroying each other for great tribulation, lack of bread. 
Anybody gonna care about who you are in that day? Motherfuckers have to be like, oh, that's 50 cents. Leave them alone, bro. You gonna fuck that nigga got money? You got great. You a huge target. All y'all women walking around wearing 20% clothes. I don't even know what to call them now, man. It's a damn shame. They walking around with crop top booty shorts, and then they got the butt unzipped too. The butt be unzipped, the zipper is unzipped, the shirt is unzipped. Like, God damn. Just wear your fucking drawers. <laughs> y'all gonna be a target in that day too. Y'all think it's all cheap and shit right now. Y'all showing y'all stomachs and y'all legs. Y'all got your hair out and everything. Alright, we're gonna see. I bet you in that day you're gonna be covered up like one of those Eastern countries. You're gonna be having sweats on top of sweat. Y'all gonna be triple layered up. 90 degree weather, why? Y'all gonna be triple layered, sweat. But y'all gonna be happy about it too. Niggas still gonna spit them out though. Like, you know the girl who look good. It don't matter if you try to cover up. You know what I'm saying? I seen you a few weeks ago, baby. You know, you mine now. In, in that day, yeah, I saw you before COVID. And I saw them legs. Watch. Watch. Niggas is gonna hunt down certain girls in that time. Like, think about a T-30. These niggas are grimy. They don't give a fuck. They do that now. They gonna go. Now we gotta read it one more time. Second Ezra 15 and 19 birds. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. All right, y'all woman an easy ass target. That's all that's coming down to you. We the lesson. We're not sitting up here telling nothing that ain't true. All we're doing is giving you a warning. Be on point. We say the same thing to men. You can't say we always get on the female. We were just getting on this goddamn demon up here earlier. We couldn't shut his goddamn mouth. Yes, he was a man of his fucking like on camera. Men, women, ain't nobody exempt from getting the most high's, uh, what's it called, instruction. That's a reward coming to your ass at the end of the day. Jump over to 9 and 11 now. Second message. You can grab it if you got one for you. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 6. Verse 10. Jeremiah 6 and 10. To whom shall I speak and give warning? They that they may hear. Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Therefore am I full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad God, and upon the assembly of the young with men together. Right, so we can basically do what? We can jump to the future and we can use that to prophesy about what's happening right now. Basically, all I heard was one word, which is pride. You disregarding the ways of the Most High. He's not looking at you like, oh, that's my son. I'm going to get him now. Listen, yeah, there's mercy. But judgment has to still come. That's what's going to happen. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken. The age with him that is full of days. And their houses shall be turned unto others with their fields and wives together. Right, so the most high, he don't care if you're a male, female, husband, wife, little children, if you're the elderly, it doesn't matter. If you're destined to receive salvation, great. If you're not, then you're going to be destroyed. It says that their houses shall be taken too. This lines up perfectly with what Ezra saw. Ezra's got this prophecy about 24, 2500 years ago. That's how long ago this was talked about. Jeremiah is reiterating the same exact thing. The same thing. All these things are beginning to be played out in this time. And y'all walking around like y'all don't fear God. Y'all got y'all foot up y'all on the ass. Y'all think y'all shit don't stink. That's all it is. I met a girl who really said that, though. Side note. She really thought it, bro. She said, that's a stink, bro. That's how prosperous that they are. That's how prosperous the that that's just how people are in this world. They really are psychologically like something is wrong. Like there's a problem with this world. They talk about they believe in God. You read them Malachi 4 and 1 and they, oh, okay. 
but too. It also makes it make sense because a lot of our people, they are so They are ashamed to come out here and offer their body as a living sacrifice. They are ashamed to admit that they are the people of Israel. And that's their true nationality. And because of that, the Lord is going to be ashamed of them. Now, the flip side, we also got two birds that have no shame to commit with Those are things that are happening right now. Look at Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 15. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall at the time that I visit them. Exactly. The Lord is visiting the world right now. They're going to fall at the time, it says, that the Lord visited them. Now, how is the Lord visiting the world? Going through famine, the plagues happening, through different earthquakes. The Lord visited Maui last, or earlier this week by that fire. And people said they just saw it coming down out of the sky randomly. Now, whether it truly was an act of God, right, quote unquote, or whether Esau did it, it doesn't matter because guess what? The Lord allowed it. He allowed that to happen. He is in control of every single person here on earth. It ain't like it, you know, what they said in the time of the Greeks, the so-called Edomites that is. They said, oh, well, the gods don't uh, take action to the affairs of men. Like, he was just looking up there like, damn, why that Like, no, it, it ain't working like that. Nah, the Most High, who is only begotten the Son, they deal directly through men, and the actions and behavior of men are because they are dangerous. Jeremiah gave us an inkling of that. The first chapter. The Lord told him, I ordain you to be a prophet. The pride of his people, which is the point, is the reason why the Lord is bringing their destruction. Come over to 2nd uh, Ezra 9 and 11. 2nd Ezra 9 and 11. Actually, we're going to start. 2nd Ezra 9, verse 10. For such as their life have received benefits have not known me. They that have blowed my law. While they had yet liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was opened unto them, understood not, but despised it. The same must know it after death by pain. Right, so the same must know it. What is the it right there? I always say that. Got to put emphasis on that. The same must know it. Meaning that the opportunity for mercy, or mercy right there, was opened up to them. And they despised it. They didn't listen to it. So the same must know it. After death, so when the destruction is happening, and this is why we always say that the Lord is going to give people that flashback. Like, oh, man, those guys on the street corner was talking about these things. They're going to have that strong flashback that's going to make them have that feeling of regret. And there's going to be the weeping and gnashing of teeth. That trickle effect is going to take place in people's minds. So they're going to know that they despise the Most High's laws and they had an opportunity to receive salvation. The same as know it after death by death. Meaning the Lord ain't going to give you these people no quick and easy death. It ain't going to be like you got shot, you didn't feel it, you were gone in the spirit world and you went to die. Nah, you're going to get tortured. Guaranteed. Watch. Wisdom Solomon 3 and 10. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 9, verse 8. Now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come, forever and ever, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, See not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceit. Get you out of the way. Prophesy deceit. That's what they do. You got a hundred? I got you. I got you. Something smooth, it feels good. Yeah, there you go. Try and cross that surface. So now mentally, they want to hear something that's going to ease their mind. It's going to feel good yeah. to their flesh. I, see. I, I don't know why I didn't have no battery. I have nothing.
that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters as long as you have the faith in your Hawabash and your Hawashah. Get that negativity out of your goddamn head. You're not going to make it that way. You're not going to win that way. Your Hawashah, he won. After he didn't get his answer, he said, all right, you know what? Y'all come with me. The hour is at hand. Let's do this goddamn thing. We know what he had to do. So we know what we have to do. We gotta go through Jacob's trouble. Ain't no other way to make it into the kingdom. A lot of y'all wanna live y'all own lives, go to college, get a long, uh, get, get a nice uh, job, retire, and then all of a sudden, after you lived out your desires and goals, then the Lord comes and you're like 85 years old. That ain't how it's gonna happen. It's not gonna play out like that. Now, some will be elderly. Of course, that is the balance. But if you have that mindset, then you're, you're off. You're not going to make it that way. Let's read that one more time. John 13 and 16. Verily I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. Mm -hmm. That's all it's coming down to right there. Who sent us? The Hawabai Shemiah Shai. He sent us out here. The prophesied to our people. Oh, wow, uh, look at that. First Corinthians 4, 1, 9. This is 1 Corinthians 4, verse 8. Now ye are full, now ye are rich. Ye have reigned as kings without us, and I would to God ye did reign that we also might reign with you. For I think that God has set forth us, the apostles' last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. What's that key word right there? Sent. The Lord has set forth us, it says even last. All of these other denominations of Christianity, I literally think, if you look at them, it says that there are over a thousand. Thousands of the denominations of Christianity. Now, in the end days, we have the true prophets of the Lord that know the truth about the Bible coming out and talking about the downfall of the society. That's a beautiful thing. He sent the apostles out last night. About six feet. Right, keep on, bro. Jump over. That's what's happening right now. Boom. Call it right there. So this is what's happening right now in these latter days. The Lord sent forth his apostles. And you have to remember, we have the, these titles for respect. So you have certain men known as bishops, certain men known as elders, certain men known as apostles. Once again, they put respect on their names because of the work that they put in. Don't let that completely steer you away from the definition of that word. An apostle is one that was sent forth. As the Lord raised all of us up to teach this word, we're all apostles because we've been sent forth now to teach the words of the Lord to our people. Just like how Yahweh Shai, he came on the scene and he was teaching his people to come back to the Most High Yahweh, but now we've been sent to teach our people to come back to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. Come back to the Heavenly Father by the faith in Yahweh Shah. Ain't that what a priest does too? You can also call us that as well. I'll go to a precept for you. Yes, sir. Real quick. This is Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 5. I will get me unto the great men who speak unto them. They have known the way of Lord Yahweh. And the judgment of their power. But these have all together opened the door. Right, and that's not everybody. The only people that have uh, broken those bonds and burst that yoke are those great men that know it says the way of the Lord high and rough. That's what it's coming down to. Either you were sent or you weren't. Those that were sent, they know what the Lord requires. They know what this Bible is talking about. There's no guess 
in our mind about what the MOB is. We're not sitting here guessing and still studying. Oh, we got to figure out this, whole, this Morocco. What is the meaning of that mm. document that it's in What is that talking about? Now, it's been lined up years ago for us. We know these things. It's a, it's a fact what the MOB is. Now it's just coming down to the Lord's time when he wants to truly manifest it. But these great men, they know it and they've been sent. First Corinthians 4. Verse 9. For I think that God have set forth us, the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. Exactly. And I wanted to get that last phrase. Break down the whole verse. We made a spectacle. It says, what does that mean? Something to look at. Think about that prefix. We have other words, uh, spectator. Right? It just means to, to, to look, to view. That's what the, the Lord has made us. And that's exactly why we come on the street corners. The entire world can now see us. That's your walking by. That's your driving by. And that's not just us. That goes for every camp throughout the entire globe. Uh, at least CMS camps. We get out there on the highways and byways diligently. We're in the place of concourse where people are walking and roaming. Not just the hood where you got niggas <laughs> everywhere. Where you have speckled birds from different nations walking by. They gotta hear their judgment too. The Lord has made us that spectacle. And it's just even to angels. The angels are looking down at this crowd, cheering us on. Yeah. Go, put in that work for the Lord. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Then they watch over us, protect them, make sure we're safe. Like they carry our prayers. The most high. What's a mighty work that we're doing right now? The Lord has made us respectable. We gotta get out here and do his work. Because you know what? There's a reward coming at the end of it. There's a reward for going to put like grab that. The Lord is not unrighteous. That Hebrews. That's very important to know. We're not just doing this for no reason. There is a reward coming for the work that the Lord is allowing us to put in. You know, and I use that word allow, but it's more like make. <laughs> yeah. He's forcing our ass to come out. I'm happy about it. Good. Make me come, please, Lord. Bubba Bushai, keep making me come. Keep that fire inside of me. And he does it on that on that carnal level, too, where he puts in our mind of saying, there is a reward. That reward is constantly in our head, and it lights a fire under our ass to get out here. This is Hebrews 6, verse 10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. Right, so it's not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. Meaning he is righteous to remember. That's what that's basically saying. But the Lord is righteous. He knows what you're going through. He's putting you through it. Your financial woes, your family drama, problems at work, whatever it may be, friends that made fun of you, left you, whatever it is, diseases and sicknesses in your body, if it's hard for you to get out the camp, you got to travel far, he knows what you're going through. He's not unrighteous to forget about it. Right? Which he have showed towards his name, in that he have ministered to the saints. So all of a sudden the name got to No. He said he's not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love that you show towards his name. You have to sacrifice and do it towards a particular name. If that's the case, the sacrifice means nothing. Absolute shit. You sacrifice it because you putting in work but you calling on the name of your shooter. Well your sacrifice doesn't mean anything. Because it wasn't towards Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So keep in mind that reward that's coming. Know to whom is giving it to you. It's not just anybody. We're talking about the King of Kings here. The man that created the entire heavens and the universe. Who knew about you before you were in your mother's womb. You want to grab it for a second? Always remember 
some of that reward. Keep that in mind. Because you have to think about these steps for the motivation. The motivation to keep going forward in this state. Always remember how you felt when you first heard the word. Have your favorite Chris. Nothing is wrong with that. Think about those things. Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 14. Nehemiah 13 and 14. Remember me, O oh my God, concerning this, and wipe not out of my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God and for the offices thereof. All right, read it one more time. All right, and I got a question after. Remember me, O oh my God, concerning this, and wipe not out my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God and for the offices thereof. Nehemiah 13 and 14, remember me, O oh my God, concerning this, and wipe not out my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God and for the offices thereof. Right, and then the 16 and 11, for good deeds it says kindness, and then uh, for offices it says uh, observations. You know, so certain discernments and things that we see in the spirit, we, we pray to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. It's okay to ask him for those things, to remember these things that we've done. You know, putting uh, putting the things together, uh, making sure we got lessons together for brothers, uh, things to answer uh, questions, how brothers can build. We are certain uh, building blocks. You know what I mean? So that you can be uh, ready for what the hell's coming. You know, because it's good to be said in proper, if you're prophesying, you're prophesying, but there's other things that are done specifically for different offices and rankings in this world that, um, that have to be carried to uh, attention to. All right, read it one more time. This is Nehemiah 13 and 14. Remember me, O oh my God, concerning this, and wipe not out my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God and for the offices thereof. God is everywhere. It's, it's this house, my church, you know? He's trying to say that's the house of God, it's not the house of God. Uh, the house of God is this way. That's who your house of God was, uh, he was sent to, uh, to save. All right? And us pushing that message, we're going to get a reward for that, man. That's the best man. That's right. And what they consider the house of God is all lies. It's house of lies. You know? I have another precept. Uh, Jeremiah 18, verse 23. 
Yet, Lord, thou knowest all their counsel against me. No, 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 20, verse 20. And then you can read 20. Jer Jeremiah 18, verse 20. Shall evil be recompensed for good? For they have big a fear for my soul. Remember that I remember that I stood before thee to speak good for them and to turn away thy wrath from them. Shall evil be recompensed for good? For they have dig a pick for my soul. Remember that I stood before thee to speak good for them. That's what, that's what's going on right now. Remember that we stood before all these people to speak good for them, even though they uh, they put our good for evil. Well, he's saying, remember me, because remember you got to put yourself in Jeremiah's time. Our people are worshiping every single Babylonian god that they created. If they create a new one next month. Our people would uh will worship. Just like right now. As soon as a new trend comes out, our people hop on it. These are different gods. These are the same spirits coming back again, snatching our people up out of mess. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's Jeremiah. Jeremiah's going through it. Go ahead. Remember that I stood before thee to speak good for them and to turn away thy wrath from them. Right, so you see, Jeremiah and Nehemiah are saying the same thing. Which Nehemiah's name means uh, the Most High is coming. So the reward is coming, you know. It's just our reward looks different than the, these people's reward out here. Like we're saying, it's going back to the And we're going to be expected for those rewards to look like the clouds. You know, the clouds get paychecks in the world. Yeah. It's a profession. You know? so at least, at least, let your pay, at least this paycheck is the same as
have 10,000 likes and stuff like that. If it happens, then great. If not, you know, the angels see. The Lord see. That's all that matters. Even if you only get one, two views. You put their work for the Lord. That's all that matters. That's all you do, man. You know, you just do it for the uh for uh26th verse, even the mystery which have been here from ages and from generations, but now Colossians 1 and 25, wherefore I am made a minister according to the dispensation of Yahweh Bashim Yashai, which is given to me for you to feel, fulfill the word of Yahweh Bashim Yashai. Even the mystery which have been hid from ages and from generations. But now it's made manifest to his saints. Yeah, it's made manifest to his saints, specifically the who. And of course, in these times, not every Israelite can be accounted as a saint. It's just the truth. In general, yes, as a whole, we are the saints because we made that covenant with the Most High. But in these days, ain't no way you can force me to call a two third a saint. It ain't no way. It's not happening. That word means we hold. That's not what they are. You think it said right into each song's world. So the, the mystery, those mysteries on the other side have been given to his saints, the prophets. Those that have been given that secret, they've been manifested to us. And now we're putting it out there and preaching to those like-minded men and women that have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. That's the first time I said that right. Yeah. I always say it backwards. <laughs> Repetition, right? Stuck in your head. You got that mystery. Let's jump over to First Corinthians 2, verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Oh, because even Ezra said it in 2nd Ezra, the 12th chapter. And I think it was an angel that actually told him, he said, look, write these words down in the book and show them to certain people, specific people. Not everybody, he said. Certain people. God, he's not showing it to everybody. And that's why I like the Zaquan brought out. Where he speaks up to the great man. I'm out of here talking to that demon that came up early in the beginning of the camp. He's glad to speak over this dumb man. You offered up an unrighteous sacrifice. It don't even smell good to me, brother. 
Simplest thing is the twelve tribes song. Oh, yeah. You know, it's right there in front of their faces. Before they before they speak to you, yeah. You always look at Excellent that and read it. Excellent point. It doesn't it doesn't matter because the spirit mm -hmm. is just not connected to the yeah. spirits. Yeah. Right, right. No, brother, you're not black, you're from Judah. But my mother goes back to Africa. Oh, okay, brother. <laughs> All right, you got it, bro. Have a good day. <laughs> Can't deal with it. You know, so funny. You just got to know spiritually the Lord ain't there. Yeah. Now, open the door, right? yeah, yeah, Jake is stuck in jail, man. Yeah. That spiritual jail cell of the mind is, uh, is real powerful. Those spirits be holding Jake's mind. But I'm black. But I'm not yeah. American. But I'm Hispanic. Oh, I'm like, oh, it's time for a new page. Like Jeremiah 5, the reason why I burst the bands. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody can do that. You gotta have a Holy Spirit with you. Second Ezra chapter 12, and verse 36. It says, Thou only has been meet to know the secret of the highest. Therefore, write all these things that thou hast seen in a book and hide them and teach them to the wise of the people whose hearts thou knowest may comprehend and keep these secrets. Yeah, teach them to the wise of the people. And the wise of the people are the ones that have the ears to hear once again. Ears to hear once again. Right. Because they're the wise of the people. They're the ones that have the ears to hear once again. Not because they're so smart in their own minds, but we have to able to tell spiritually that the Lord dealing with that man. So that I can continue to deal with it. So we can start to Don't just be out here telling the names of anybody and everybody just because you know it. It may be exciting, but not. Nah, take a deep breath, relax, show some temperance, show your spirit, move forward. Yes, sir. Right, the wise people. Yes, sir. Go ahead. This is 2nd Ezra 14 and 46. 45 and it came to pass when the 40 days were fulfilled that the highest spake, saying the first that thou hast written published openly that the worthy and unworthy may read it but keep the 70 last that thou mayest deliver them only to such as be wise among the people right, so once again we can break that down pushing it forward to these times saying what speak to the wise of the people that's why the book of Proverbs says that if you speak to a foolish man, you basically put yourself at that same level. You, know? you make yourself a fool, basically. Mm -hmm. Now you look dumb as hell, but you're going to entertain him about that flat earth theory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, baby. Now people are tuning out of here. You guys are going crazy. Yes, yeah, yeah. The Lord, the Lord said it was going to happen. Because remember the uh, the parable of the man who told the servants to go into the highways and the highways. Everyone, you know, they found a person that didn't have the garments. So what does that look like? And the rest went to the first side. They went hard for them to come to a prestigious event, but then you look at all the messed up. So. You know, sorry, they talked about it, man. You're gonna look foolish. Yeah. You know, so what 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 did the father of the group feel like? I called the 
was good and you show up. Yeah. So you can imagine the type of embarrassment. You, yeah. know? you gotta do it. So this is part of the, part of the gospel. Mm -hmm. You're gonna feel that, that spirit of uh, embarrassment and foolishness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a part of that sacrifice that we're going through because it's vexing at the end of the day. But this is a part of the teaching out here. I show forth that foolishness that you will from all sides. Oh, it's the spirit. He, uh, he brought out Ezekiel 13 and 17, cursing out our women. 
because they were twerking up on that blue. I only watched a few seconds and I turned the video off. But he did do another video where he was cursing him out. He went over there to Africa on that same video where the three guys were uh, twerking. And was cursing them out. That was a good job though. You know, and then he had the Israelite woman saying shame, shame. You know? But what's the name then? <laughs> what's the name then? You shouldn't let him get hit, brother. That's mercy. Boy, that's mercy. The boy had mercy on that nigga. Yeah. Didn't even know it. Little monsters, man. Hey. Hey, it's gonna be awesome. Sorry, very soon, bro. Industry, how far you know, man? Boys are for you. You know. Don't might be your fourth kid in the kingdom, bro. <laughs> 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 your first four. <laughs> you think you got a clever, man? Yeah, a lot of our people going out there and, and going for that, you know? 
Whereupon they returned to the Gentiles. Right, in the church, they always, in church, they always talk about Antioch, you know? They talk about this point when uh, we were able to wake up, you know? It started with somebody, with, you know, with, with, our, with them. With them. Really, that was us. And now it's open up to us. We'll try to use this chapter. We already read. We already read. Salvation was for his name. We'll go back to the People. How could they be in this condition? Some of our people be in this condition, right? And some of our people need to be great in this society, you know, even though we know what it takes to be in this society. When you look at Esau, this thing is not what he doesn't have barely run around all these things as much as the our people. I mean, shoot, the tribe of Gad, I think the number one homeless population is the tribe of Gad in the South Africa. Oh, and then down there in the bed. Right, the Jews, those who are supposed to know, the ones who believe. Look, the paragma, it says someone's going to be inserted in there. Esau is taking his son. But when this thing really starts happening, these other these people who don't believe, these mysteries that are explained so, so simple, when it starts happening, they're not going to have no answers for the congregation. And they got thousands and thousands of uh, members, right? Because they're, they're, right, they're signing things, you know, filling out forms. You know, how many forms do I can fill out? You just call on the name. You're just sincere. You get on the name. Yeah, these other groups, you got to give over all, all types of information, man. Like, what's, what's going on? That's not how we operate in truth. And we're going to find out if they do something there, you know. I don't know if it's meant to hurt, but you know, everything's going to come out. Like it says in Luke 12 and 2, where he's trying to come to fruition. Read that verse again. This is Matthew chapter 10. Yeah, Luke chapter 10. Five verse, yeah, five verse five. These twelve, Yahweh sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. Yeah, why would he say that? Don't go in these certain areas. It's not talking about the hood, you know. Because that's how you try to use that to say that y'all don't why y'all don't go to the hood. We in the hood, man. Go over there and say the wrong thing to one of these people. You, you can do this, the same thing that you say the way you can go in the suburbs and say that. At this point, you get this crazy, especially in the DMV area. This place is the worst. Yeah, man. Even in here. Even in here, area. It's horrible, man. Finally going into the Hebrew. 
that you say salvation is only for a particular people, and the things that are coming, the people understand the things that are coming, and then you tell them the only way to escape that, you have to be of a particular race, you're like, hold on, you're straight up racist. That's what I'm saying. There's no way you can say this book is being mass produced by everybody. It's only for you. Of course you're going to talk about it. Real quick, by everybody, in your own countrymen. Just like David said, I have become an old stranger to my own people. Mm. Go ahead, bro. Matthew 10 and 22. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endures. Right, why, why are we going to be hated for his name's sake? The name's Yahweh and Yahweh shall. The name's are not God and Jesus Christ. They had Hebrew names. Remember, Paul heard Hebrew when he fell off the horse, right? He heard Hebrew. Yeah. yeah, so the alphabet that we have today is not concrete. English is a made up language. It's a made up language. Just like the Yiddish, where the language is speaking in Israel today, that's also made up. It's a combination of German, uh, what's the other one? Slavic, Slavic, Slavic. They say that you work in the same Yeah, the Yiddish. The came in and put in different vowels. So they don't know what the hell they're talking about either. Everybody's off. And because we're saying that, what's happening? We got the persecution. But guess what? We got the block button, bro. We got this. It's a Hold on, what you supposed to say? You want to have a name? It's a It's also some of the other documents said about the Assyrian that they use right now. Uh, the Southern Kingdom was living in a certain captivity. Because you know that the, the U, Jewish yeah, yeah. people say they are uh, Judah and Levi and stuff. So. Southern people's ever in uh, Syrian captivity. So how is that? How is that so? That's why the Quran out here, Kaya Kwan, he called Benjamin, not Benjamin. Not a Jew. Benjamin, not a Jew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the spirit. He said the same thing. Yeah, Oh, okay. Shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endures to the end shall be saved. Yeah, that's approaching very soon. Even though your lights are still on, you can still open up your, uh, your credit apps, your bank apps, soon those things are going to stop. Then you're, uh, you're going to remember things that you should have been doing reading, you know, fasting, praying, in your mind right. When these things happen, they're going to happen. It's inevitable. The crash is inevitable. You're not going to have to clock in at work. Look, pretty soon anymore. The playing field is going to be easy. The military is going to come in. Police are going to get military, militarized. Part of them onboarding, we're probably, probably sure now, part of their onboarding now currently after 9-11 is uh, learning like some type of military training. And then when Obama was in office, remember, he financed all that, uh, the armory and he weaponized the police force, the military. So they ready. They can't wait to put that stuff on, man. They be training, you know? these secret layers and stuff like in uh, that movie Men in Black. He got to pick any weapon. They got all that shit, bro. They got all that stuff. Wait. Pull the trigger. Good. So again, because we're saying these things, the world hates us. They don't want the end to come. Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 46. Uh, Isaiah 46. Uh, Let's go. That's, uh, that's Ezra's. Matthew 10, verse 23. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. Right, so it's, if it's, if don't find it a mystery. If your brothers get a call and say, hey, take this on the road. Just because you foresee something. No more. All four kids might be in different locations. And the brothers who are not these kids, just make out with those brothers. It might not be, it might just be us. It might have to be like that, you know? Because he saw the way he moved. He'll try to come get on you. Remember they brought that, uh, that candy wagon? They said, if y'all ever come back to a certain area, come to your high school. They said, if y'all ever come back, we're just going to take all that. So why, why, how would the gospel continue to go out if everybody can take it all the time? And this go out. See, people think, that's why how we shot, you got to read between the lines, be practical of what you how we shot was telling men back there. Sound free? Got it? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, book of Ezekiel, chapter... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come to the mother box, man. Ezekiel, chapter 7, verse... 
5 and 6. Thus said the Lord Yahweh, an evil, an evil, evil behold is come, an end is come, the end is come, it watcheth for thee, behold, it is come. Alright, so it's here. If it's already here, that means we're supposed to be prepping ourselves. Other people, they hear these scriptures, the end is come, wait a minute, the end is I still got to do something. Just got these groceries. Just, you know what I'm saying? Wait, what time tonight? What time is the end? That's what JG asked. What is it? You know? What day is it? What time is it? Hey, do you watch the news? Do you understand what's going on in the Middle East? You know what I'm saying? Do you understand what's going on with the whole things here in DC? You know what I'm saying? Do you understand the technology that's going on right now? AI? Yeah, man. And AI is taking over everything with AI now, bro. And the thing with AI is once you uh, engage with it, Esau owns all the rights to everything you trying to do. It's not like, okay, I'm going to take this picture and create this car, this artificial intelligence. No, Esau owns that. If that gets uploaded or saved anywhere on the grid, Esau's taking it. You better, you better have your own satellite, you know what I'm saying? Your own power source. So it's, remember, Esau is blessed to do of heaven. This nigga is literally the end of the world. He is the end. So the end is walking around. We just don't see him uh, uh, higher up. We just see him walking around. But the master of our people, they don't see him as the end of the world. Even though they know if he, if he rules forever, they just can't die out. And then they say, all right, well, if I get to keep going, we go to this family reunion. I deal with that shit after I eat these pork chops. You know what I'm saying? I deal with that after I, you know, I drop this turkey in this, uh, in this deep fryer in November, you know? Go ahead, bro. Verse 7. The morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwellest in the land. The time is come, the day of trouble is near. Yeah, the land is talking about us, you know? Yasha Allah. It's not talking about, uh, 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 right then and there. And not the sounding again of the mountains. Verse 8. Now will I shortly pour out my fury on thee. Right, that's why it's so important that we gotta uh, keep coming out here to do this work. There's a lot of Israelites who haven't woke up. The elect might be sealed, but the elect is sealed. Right? But a lot of them have to wake up still. A lot of them still have to go through different experiences and chastisements to get this truth, man. And the Lord is going to have to jack you up because we're in a point in 2023, you know, where the, where the Lord may have to do something either very great to you or you just wake up, you know. Maybe you walk by one day, maybe you like, catch a video, maybe you actually do look up the entire summer and say, hey, what's the fuck's going on? You know? We had a lot of Israelites uh, back in, uh, when I came in the tree, they uh, were uh, un unenrolling in school, you know. Uh, coming in, you know, coming to the camp. Remember, uh, what's his name? Uh, yeah, 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 Greg. Yeah, he didn't even have a Hebrew name. He was in the Hebrew name. That's how I knew him. Greg and Barney? And Potty? Remember, remember when he had a Hebrew name? Greg, Barney, and Potty. They all know. Hey, like, Potty, remember he, he used to come to camp. He used to come to camp when his graduation was down there. He had, like, what are you doing, man? He owed me a lot of choice, man. He was gone. Verse <laughs> 8, now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee, and I accomplish my anger upon thee. Yeah, what I was doing, man. Right? You got these women that get shot in the foot, Rebecca Stout got shot. Turn got locked up, and Madison came behind that. You know? The Lord's doing his thing. He told me, you gotta remember, look how close he died. As big as he was, everything that he amassed, this nigga died falling from an, out of a helicopter to the earth, man. And, and his daughter. Look how he went out. No one who is born is that Job is innocent. Go ahead. And I will judge thee according to thy ways. I will have, I will recompense thee for all thy And that's what he did to uh, Jermaine Grant. Uh, 
you have to understand that somebody can get just a few seconds in the end of your face. Because Jake believes, some Jakes do not understand that faith is also something that was supposed to be for a certain period of time. We're not supposed to be faithful forever. Because why? Faith is because we're still in captivity. And once we're in the kingdom, there's no need for faith. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 4. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure, which is manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, which ye also suffer. That's when the faith ends, because he's there. He showed up. He promised he would show up. He showed up. So now you no longer need faith because you're no longer waiting for anybody else. The person you were faithfully waiting for showed up. That's when the faith ends. What? Even the salvation of your soul. There you go. Go ahead. It's the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 2. It says, and look into unto Yahweh Shah, the author and finisher of our faith, mm -hmm. who is the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, uh, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of the Most High. Yeah, he started the process, and he has to be the one. That's why, I, when, you know, we understand. Yahweh Shah started the process, he has to be the one to end it. Because remember, he started the process as what? He started the process as Adam. All right, he started the process as Adam, so he has to come back and end it as the outside. shot. That's why he said he is the alpha and the omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is Adam, and he he is also the savior of the outer shot. He is the man who really did the greatest fuck up, right? He's the man who did the greatest fuck up as Adam, and he is the same man who's gonna do what? The greatest fix up. It's all him. That's why all we can do is just have to, you know, have faith in your house. Acts 13, where the scripture says that where he would gather into one all. next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitude, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, you turn to the Gentiles. Right, judge yourself worthy. It's not like we just speak on these things. And Paul said, uh, Mark is Mark from the cross of vision for no reason. We have to do these things on purpose. They're worth they're not worthy. They're literally not worthy. The things that they're doing, the things that they're spewing out of their mouth, they're teaching. Alright, what they're telling their congregation to do as Babylon moves forward to destroy them. It's, it's crazy. Then They'll take, they'll take this scripture as, all right, well, we tried to bring it to you over here in the U.S., but now we got to wake up our brothers around the four corners. So I'm going to open up a church in a whole other country. But you don't even go out every single week here in Babylon. Where are those 300 men at? I broke down 14 streets today. There's nobody down there. This is what, 81, 82 degrees out? Today's a nice day. You're talking about you waiting on a signature, man. That's crazy. Not signatures here, signatures around the earth from Esau. Or whoever's born in the country, man. Go ahead. You know what I'm about to say? You know what I'm saying? 501c3. You gotta understand, yeah, these that's things that they do about getting signatures and all that, because remember, 501c3 is under tax exemption. You need to have proof of membership, man. They don't 
to just do things just because those signatures are all part of 504 and 501c3 charge. Jews only. There you go, man. 
That's why in, in uh, Acts 13, he says we already came to you. read the third, right? Go back to Acts 13. He already just told you in the preface and in the scripture, he said, I tried to come to you first. You wouldn't listen. Now I got to catch flight. I got to catch, I got to sail. I got to catch a sail. Me and Barnabas are out, man. Dust off our shoes in here. And for the few believers, remember, he was confirmed. When you read the 14th chapter, he was confirming the souls of the just, meaning the people he was visiting in these lands hundreds of miles ago, away. I tell them, look, I'm catch hell. I'm about to leave, but when I leave, hey, your soul is going to be purified by getting jacked up. It's going to be happening by everybody in this city. Everybody around you, your own loved ones, they're going to be asking, hey, why are you out here for the first time? No, you know, in the Olympics or whatever the hell they had going on back then, but the big empire of the high holiday, so called high holiday, holiday thing. You going to Acts 13? Verse 47 again, it says, For so had the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, and thou shalt be for salvation unto the end of the earth. Right, so Paul was a light unto the Gentiles, now we got to get Acts. I mean, Isaiah 11. Get Isaiah 11 chapter, and uh, I think it's like. 10 or 11, the root of Jesse. Yeah, because that's the spirit. Now that I'm thinking about it, I never considered it. But Paul was a light to the Gentiles, and he has like the outside of the light. Yeah, straight to the point. And remember, Paul, remember, he was blinded by a great light. It's all spiritual. He was blinded, all right? He has scales on his eyes. Go ahead. Isaiah 11 and 10, and in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse. Who shall stand for an ensign of the people? To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. Right, but it had to be through a man on earth. It wasn't just Yahweh Shah showing up. Look, remember, Yahweh Shah's ministry was mainly in Israel. The reason why I say mainly, because he did go to the other tribes. He went to the other tribes. But while he was alive on earth before being crucified, he was he stayed in his district, he stayed in his area. He wasn't going out to the land of Elam, the Moab, or just in, the, uh, in different parts of Europe, Tarshish, all these different places. He wasn't doing that. He laid the groundwork. He laid the groundwork, and he showed the greatest example of being jacked up, going up on that cross, suffering persecution. They saw him. They heard about the whip, man. They saw his body. They saw his body. That was a representation of things that they would have to go to. That's why you have to say you have to bury your own cross. Doing that, suffer and shame just for him. And for the things that he said. We're gonna we're always doing the same the same thing. Alright? Every time somebody gets upset, gets offended, they try to blaspheme us, attack our campus. It's for your house shot. Alright, it's for them whips, man. Think about them whips that he was getting. Go ahead. Verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day the Lord shall send shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. Right, that's why I asked the first chapter. They asked him, and now this time we're going to restore the salvation to Israel. He told him no. He told him no, not shit. Yo, Rome was in full swing, man. During that time, Rome was in full swing. Of course, there was infighting. That's how Rome always. But Rome was just like it's infighting now, man. The show was both still going on. But this place is coming to an end. Rome, but you got to remember, Rome was also a spreadberry thing. The military was everywhere. You know? I just read a stat that the U.S. has the most military bases in another country, I think in Germany. It's got the most military bases in Germany. Outside of the U.S. in Germany. I didn't know that. Yeah. A spiritual. You look at where Germany speaks on uh, going on Earth. Right? You're in the Korean. Go ahead, bro. Go back and ask. Acts 13, verse 48. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. Right. Now, this is not talking about a natural born official, but it is talking about the Israelite who looks like a natural born official. That's the mystery. We're talking about the mystery. We're going into the mystery. It's being published now. It's plain. But even though it's being made plain, it's a mystery to two thirds of our people. And, it's, and, and by default, it's a mystery to these nations. The push is not going to wake up, man. If, if Kush, if salvation was for Kush, we just do the work of Silver Spring every week. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Brothers would be traveling from different states to do the work of Silver Spring. It's the most Kushite. Yahweh Shah say, go not to the land of Samaria. Until you see the 
And then we're not going to set up. What's another place we see when we close to that wall? And, and, and not only that, I, so so, at all, because remember, the Lord said that, right? The Lord said not to go to the cities, uh, not to go to the Samaritans, right? But if you if you remember, the Lord hung out in Samaria. So that's why you have to understand the context. What was he saying, right? Because think about it. If you tell if you tell somebody, don't go to South, don't talk to the people of South East. Don't go to South East. But you yourself have been to South East. Now, without understanding, that sounds like a contradiction. Well, that's what you gotta think. Okay, well, what, what, what is he saying? He was saying, when you go to South East, who are you talking to when you're in South East? That's it. So that's kind of what it was. Because I was sad, you had Israelites that lived in Samaria. But at the time, Samaria were, were, were heavily, was heavily populated by, by Christians. That's right. Well, even if the woman, the Cyrus, 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 it was just divided by, you know how they may create their own fucking borders type shit. Yeah. Right? But if you can say, hey, where's your house shot? Was your house shot outside of the Israelite border at the time? Yes. You all over, you can see that. But he was still, but if you look at the land of Israel, as the land of Israel, he was really just in Israel. Because what the that's, that's what, that's where the northern tribes were. So they left. And then Kush came in there and populated the area. And then they started, they started trying to keep our customs. That's why when the woman at the well said what she said, it's because Kush has this thing where they always be trying to get close to us and trying to call themselves keeping our customs. And they're sticking needles. And then when we tell them, hey, this ain't for you, go back to the book of Nehemiah, now they really start acting like the heathens that they are. And they said, nah, hey, if you don't want to let us in, then you can't build your temple. We're going to go and tell Esau that you're building your temple. That's the history. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life, and this is the scripture that I really want to show you. And as many as were ordained to eternal life, all right, look up that word ordained. I And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. Right, and Israelites warned them. Imagine all of us going to some Hamite spot or some uh, uh, some uh, Moabite spot like this to, to do the works. Yeah, we might try and call the police on. We might try and get us up out of here. Well, yeah, the, the, the Moabite did that. Hmm? The Moabites. Where was it? Super Spring. Acts 13 and uh, 48 goes back to the Greek word uh, tasso, which means which means uh, to put in order, to station, uh, to place in a certain order, to arrange, to assign a place, to a point. And a strong definition it says. Yeah, so Paul, Paul, remember, Paul had the authority to put things in place. We go back to Colossians. Go back to Colossians one, and that's why I wanted to start it. Uh, he received certain things according to how he was able to do certain things according to how he received them. That's why he spoke in the way that he spoke. Because he was very, he had knowledge as if he was one of the twelve. And he was spreading that throughout all the region. I was in a rush amongst the two thirds. Go ahead, bro. 
Colossians 1, Colossians chapter 1, verse 24. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Yahweh Shai in my flesh for his body's sake. Right, we did literally just talk about that, those stripes. <coughs> That's what Paul is talking about right here. Read that again and read it slow. Huh? Yeah. Colossians 1 and 24. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Yahweh Shai in my flesh for his body's sake which is the church. Wherefore, I am made a minister according to the dispensation of the Mosai, which is given to me for you. Right, so he received this directly from the Shai. Remember, Paul was taught directly from the Shai. He said he didn't go up unto Jerusalem to learn of any men. You know, Paul was brought up a certain way. He even knew that the Lord had it to where he had to learn multiple ladies, two multiple ladies. You just knew the Hebrew the whole time. You can't do nothing in Antioch. You want to do this much in Antioch. That's why he made the famous guy act the Corinthians about the interpretation of things. You he was taught about not with flesh and blood, right. neither went I up to Jerusalem right. to them which were apostles before me. Yeah, well, because, because the thing is, you got to understand, when he was going to, uh, yeah, he's in there, so that's the when he was, uh, when he was going to persecute the Jews, right, what happened is the Lord pulled up on him, right, he got blinded, so he went out to Damascus, and Ananias was sent to help, help him recover his, uh, his sight. Now, instead of going straight to Jerusalem, he stopped, right? He made a trip towards the region. Before he got to Jerusalem, I, I, I think it's the, I think it's, I forgot the place, but he stopped for at least one or two years. That's what, that's what the Alvin Shah told him. The Alvin Shah was teaching him at that time, right after he got his sight back. That's why he said he didn't go to Jerusalem to learn from one of the disciples. Yeah, verse 17, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia that's it, that's and, it. and returned again unto Damascus. That's it, that's it. That's then, when he was going to like it. Yep. When he went to Arabia and he returned, that trip, during that trip, the Lord was suffering. I was, I was suffering with him. Yeah. All right? And then it says, then after three years, three I went years, up to go. Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days, but other of the apostles saw I none. James or Yaquan, the Lord's brother. So Yahweh Shah was suffering with him for three years after he recovered his sight. That's why he didn't go strictly, uh, strictly to uh, Jerusalem. He went to Arabia. He was traveling. Yahweh Shah was suffering with him. Then when Yahweh Shah basically told him in the spirit, he's ready. That's when he went to Jerusalem. Well, it's, it's, it's number three. Uh, yeah. 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 Galatians chapter 6, verse 17. Right. From henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord in There you go. So he says, therefore, so therefore, let no man trouble me or trouble you, because he's also speaking to us. Okay? Why? Because Paul has such confidence. Why? Because he said, I bear upon my body the marks of our Lord Yahweh Shah. When you look at that word marks, you got it? Bring it out. or marks comes from the Greek stigma. Stigma, right? All of us got the stigma of the house shot. That's the reason why when you out in the world, you, you stand out like a sore thumb. Why do you think that all these niggas, specs and wet banks and the rest of these people have this hatred for the men of the Lord? Because there's a stigma upon us. It's the spirit of Yahweh Shah that's upon us, right? Figuratively mean 
a scar of service. And what? A scar of service. Scar of service. All the spiritual battles that we go, the adversities, the ups and downs. These are things that are what? Sealed into your memory. All right? Sealed into your memory. And you feel confidence over those victories that you've had, right? All throughout these adversities. Paul, that's what Paul was speaking about. That's why we have to have faith because part of the patience is that what? The Heavenly Father is allowing us to what? To collect victories after victories. So we can be ready for what? To follow our temptation. Because think about it. If we've been winning this whole time, right? Because of your help, because of your because of your help, well, why would we all of a sudden think that when the market, when the market of peace come in, we're going to lose? No, we're going to think that we're going to win because we've been winning. That's right. That's why the Lord has given his victory. It's called scars of service. All right? Colossians chapter 1, verse question 25. You got a question, bro? Yeah. yeah. What's yeah. your question? Hey. Hey, how y'all doing today, man? It's now, man. Hey, but uh, I'm trying to go back to you. What about? What's your question? What's your question about it? I'm just making. What, 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 what he just said about the niggas, you know what I'm saying, about us going in each other's name like that. What do we mean? Yeah, Deuteronomy 28. We're going to explain it to you. Deuteronomy chapter 28. That's how we find out who we are in the Bible. Part of how we identify ourselves. Yeah, but we can't get no knowledge, so you know, you're so aggressive. If you're so, if, if you so aggressive, gain our knowledge, man, you can't give out nothing. Ain't nobody well, gonna digest nothing. Man. But the thing is, if, if you have your son and you're not aggressive with the knowledge that you have towards him, you're gonna grow I know where I come from. I know the, get beat up. The same thing with the Lord. This, the message don't change. Just because we got the Bible don't mean we all soft and shit. Home, 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 the scriptures. Home, home, home. That's what I'm saying. No, Jesus, that, Jesus message, are no disciples. Missing, it's all warriors, man. Missing, we know that, man. Now, I'm not missing the point. It's just your blessings ways, man. You can't get... You can't get listen, listen, brother. I'm trying to give it to you. Here's so we're all fighting for position. So when, when you came up here, when you came up here, he was reading a definition of a word, right? So you go to Luke 14 and 23. Read that real quick. And the Lord said... And I want you to look up the word compelled. Go ahead. Said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. That's where we are right now. We're on the highways and the hedges and we're compelling our people. Now this was written in Greek. Look up the Greek word for compel and read this to this brother. Because hey brother, to tell you what, when I first heard this truth, I was like, yo, it was like an uppercut. You know, it was like a, it was like a hook that I wasn't even looking for. The king. Go ahead, bro. Well, compel, the word is a knock the soul in the Greek and it means by force, threats. Threats. Now, we didn't threaten you because we also spiritual. We don't come out here trying to stir up fights or anything. But, like I was going to go to, got the, uh, I shall be eating. Yeah. The way that we identify ourselves, like you said, niggas going at each other, that's how we identify ourselves. Because that's one of the curses that was placed upon us. And no other people on earth act like us or engage with each other like we do with each other, our own. Only one people on earth do that. Well, no, just to add on. Also, you have to understand something. The Bible tells you that the secret of wisdom is double to that which is. Everything comes in double. You have wicked aggression, you also have righteous aggression. Right now, we being righteously aggressive. What you're talking about, unfortunately, is what we've known, which is wicked aggression when we start killing each other. So you also have to be aggressive for truth. Truth is not for the timid. All right, truth is not for the timid. You can be aggressive in truth, just like others are accustomed to be aggressive in lies and destruction. Can't say aggressive in uh, lies and destruction. Yeah. 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 The Lord placed curses upon our people. We're about to read one of these curses. Deuteronomy 28 and 53, And thou shalt eat the fruit of thy own body, the flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which the Lord thy God hath given thee, in the siege and in the straightness wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee. So that, to the point. Yeah, that's so that the man that is tender among you and very delicate. The man that is tender among you and very delicate. At first reading that, you're saying, no, that's a homosexual. That's just talking about being friendly, being kind hearted, being caring towards one another. The man that is tender and delicate. Go ahead. That among you, go ahead. His eyes shall be evil toward his brother. His eyes shall be evil towards his brother. Now, brother, I've seen we do prank videos like this. A person will go and walk. Of our people, they'll go into the hood and they'll just sit there and stare at somebody and see what will happen. 
you know, and they, they, they're risking their lives doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, another time, remember, remember one time we finished up camp at Petworth and we were walking, the doctor was still alive, and it was homecoming season uh, at Howard. And we was walking down the street, and it was like maybe 9, 10 o'clock at night. And everybody, every single person that we passed, it was our nation, they were giving us real dark energy and dirty looks. Yeah. And we didn't look like this, we were just walking normal. Yeah. And the spirit was off the dock, he was like, this girl's a demonic guy here. Yeah. It was real evil, you remember that, it was yep. real evil, you know? And that's that's the curse, no matter where you go with our people. Even if you look but at you, them, but you don't have, But you don't have to walk around and get that, you can get that right in your garden, right in your circle right here, my man. Yeah, you can. Your same circle, your same brothers and preachers, you know? Get you that can. right here and there. And it's can, but everybody fight for resistance. But the huh? thing is, when that happens, we identify, and that person is no longer with us. That's right. That's the difference between us and the world. But See, how niggas, you they'll identify check it, they'll though. lie on you. You know what I'm saying? You're hooping with the nigga two weeks later. No, not here. Not here. All right? We believe in truth. We're the opposite of that. When we look at each other, we see the Lord in each other. We don't look, when we look at people in the world, we look at them like, okay, you're dealing with a particular spirit. I gotta operate with you a certain way. I gotta discern your spirit so that way I can function here properly. You know? That's how we, that's, it, take, it takes everything in us to come out here and do this work every single week. I don't know if you see us, but we're out here every single week speaking this truth out of the scripture. And right now, I'm giving you a scripture of how you can identify yourself by saying, look, our people, how we know how we are, because we look at each other so evil. So keep reading that scripture. Mm -hmm. And toward the wife of his bosom. And towards the wife. Uh -huh. The family structure is jacked up amongst all the tribes. Man. The majority of our men, they're locked up, so they can't take care of their women. Can't take care of their kids. Go ahead. It says, and toward the remnant of his children. Right, and then all the in-between, you got a lot of our men, they're wicked as hell, they're molesters, or they're hoe out their kids, they're pimps. You know, they'll sell them off for drugs to do whatever the hell they gotta do. Yes, our, our, our people do that shit. Don't nobody else do that. The, the Chinese, the Arab men, they're not doing that. They're sending their kids out to work to go sell. Why shit. come they not doing it? Because they're not the children of Israel. You just, you just, you, you just, not, in, not, you just in your circle, me, brother. You just in your circle. The Lord cursed us. It's not my fault. The Lord cursed us. We didn't listen to him. Read verse one for the brother. Yeah. Let's go. Up, let's go all the way to the beginning of the chapter. Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight, verse one, and it shall come to pass if thou if thou shalt hearken diligently, meaning listen carefully and understand, right? unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all His commandments which I command thee this day. Right, like one of the scripture says, uh, you're supposed to love thy brother as I need him. Uh, uh, you're not, not supposed to sleep with your neighbor's wife. You're supposed to have a particular dietary law. You're supposed to keep the Sabbath, honor your father and your mother. All right, thou shalt not steal. You know, a lot of these people out here riding around, they got, what's in, what's in their pockets? How are niggas walking around with 20 t-shirts, 20 knives, and a pack of 10 batteries? You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, bro. And oh, if you're filling up gas in your tank, you're a thief. That's not cheap gas. I'm, that's not your petrol. You didn't, you didn't buy that barrel, you know? It's, it's all the way down to that. You want to hop in there? No, yeah, just add on to uh, one tender uh, we read uh, a piece of earlier. Uh, in the past, in the ancient times, so-called black men we were tender towards each other. When you look up the word tender, it means receptive, all right? Of a receptive heart, all right? Meaning we had actual conversation where we were willing to learn from each other and we were receptive. We were receptive of criticism, right? And we were receptive of love. And if you notice now, even our interaction, when you get criticism from the scriptures, your heart immediately is fighting to be receptive. And we don't blame you because this, this is the curse. Right? We know that in the other the Lord told us, when you tell your people who they are, initially they're not going to want to be receptive. But don't worry about it, just keep preaching. Because the ones who are receptive, who are chosen, will receive the word. That's a beautiful read that, read that point, Deuteronomy man. again. Deuteronomy 28 and 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. All right, mm -hmm. so if we were to listen to the Lord, we would have been set up right nice. A pinnacle of everybody on earth, every single race, we would have been perfect. In his eyes, we would have been above all of them. 
you can see that every facade of light is books, singers, athletes, entertainers. If you want to be entertained, you're going to have to watch one of these people on TV. You're going to have to watch one of these people start the trend. Right? Now go to verse 15. What happens if we don't do that? Go ahead. Deuteronomy 28 and 15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Right, we read that curse about the evil lie. That was just one of the curses. Now, what verse was that? That was verse 15. That, no, the curse that you read. Oh, that was verse 15. So, that was all the way at 53. So, 53 minus 15, you do the math in your head. All you do is way more curses. And then the chapter goes all the way to 68. And these are how we identify ourselves. Let's go to verse 47 and read down over here. Deuteronomy 28, verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness. Right, and the way that that was being said right there is Yahweh Allah Hayaka. Yahweh Allah Hayaka. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. That's the most high. His son's name is Yahweh Shai. Allah means God. You know when you say people say Allah, that just means God. Allah Hayaka, the Ka on the end means you, your. Mm -hmm. Yahweh Allah the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. That's what we obey. Ba'ashem, which means in the name of Yahweh Shah. Go ahead. The only begotten Son who the world called Jesus Christ. Keep going. Right, Thank you. Yep. Deuteronomy 28 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. It's real comforting. It's getting good, bro. It's good, right, bro? I know you heard us a couple times. But you know what though, brother, it, 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 it's just like this, that makes you really understand what the Lord said, the angel was locked in Yeah. You know, when he's standing there, and this could be fine, you know, it's being dropped. All of us are paying attention. We've heard it, we've heard this countless times. But every time it gets pulled back, we're like, oh, it's refreshing. You know, but it's, he's the only one like an ear to hair, like, you know, oh, shit, I got it. It's like you come, you come, you come off, you've been gone for so long, you come home and you want your mom to make you that feel like Yeah, man. That's all you want. You just want that big clue. Let's get that clue, bro. Yep. It says, with gladness of heart, for the abundance of all things, therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Oh, that's spiritual. It said, for the abundance of all things. That's that scripture. It says, uh, seek me the king and the Lord, and all these things shall be added unto you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Go ahead. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28 and 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness. <laughs> but one of the main reason is because we've been serving our enemies. Right. If we were to serve, uh, uh, just like during the time of King David or Solomon or any other king, we'd be fine. But because we're serving our enemy, he's got our things dysfunctional. You know, Jake is taking the gifts. His eyes are getting blinded. They're doing the things they're not supposed to do. The guys fall off. They love it. And if we can't, at this point, we can't stop it. The Lord has to stop them, and he will with nuclear fire. Right, brother. And that's the same thing. You know, all those things. That's the same Negro who later on is going to be. That's the same Negro who later on is going to be in some barber shop. He's going to be in some barber shop talking about, I don't know why we, we what's wrong with us, man? Our lifestyle is fucked up. You know, you know, things don't want to be fathers, man. We need answers. Well, the Lord brought you right here to get the answer, man. And you walk the way. And I was telling this brother on the side, it's, it's crazy how close we need to get to it. Missing, yeah. completely missing, and you're gonna go right back and complain about the, the about what's going on right now. Yeah, so, yeah, it's like me, it's like at the fairground, so you can hit right next to the bullseye, but if you don't get it, you're not gonna get that fight. Yeah. You can hit right next to the bullseye every single time. That bell's not gonna go off, you know, that light's not gonna go off for you, that reward is not coming through. That's heavy, you said that, bro. That's heavy. Let's go finish the a little bit more there.
It says, Deuteronomy 28, verse 48, Therefore shalt thou serve the enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in one of all things. Yeah, that's Esau Edom. He's the main enemy. He, he didn't even stay to get there. He's the main enemy, because now that you know who you are, even though he didn't see what tribe or whatever, he might have been from. After you know who you are, it's, it's our job to teach you who the enemy is immediately after. Go ahead. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Yeah, you rule a yoke of iron, you're not going to see any other race of people come up except for us. What does that have to say about that scripture? Go so ahead. Verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. That's good, that's good. Let's get, let's get, let's get, let's get I was trying to get the one. It shall be a sign for a sign and a wonder for all that see. That was 36. Oh, we went right after. Uh, yeah, that's not one. Deuteronomy 28, verse 46. And they. All the curses. It says they. Everything he just said. All the curses. Go ahead. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. They're going to be on us for a sign and a wonder. So if you ever you want to get directions towards something, what do you got to do? You got to follow signs. Uh, to figure out where the, what's going on, where you're going. You got to read. Go ahead. The, those curses are our signs. Jake's just blowing through. Do not enter. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Do not turn on right. Turn it on right. Do not even read the signs. Go ahead. And upon thy seed forever. That's it. It was going to be forever. When did the Lord say it was going to stop that? Yeah, how was Shai down on the cross and it stopped those curses? That didn't stop that. That just stopped the sacrificial laws. Mm -hmm. We're still rehearsing, like you said. Go ahead. These curses, these curses like being in the maze. And not knowing the exit. Right, the one thing about curses, you see it in movies all the time. Somebody gets cursed in the beginning, they spend the whole movie trying to find the person who made the curse to undo it. Yep. So only Yahweh by Shemel Shah can undo this. Because right. you know what? Because it's a spell. Yeah, look what's going on with our people. Our people jumped a bunch of Edomites, and now they're worshiping a white chair. <laughs> How do you get our people out of that? And that's just a new trend. That's fucking crazy. That's just something new. Next month, it'll be so, who knows what the hell is going to be happening in November. That's why the Lord said, Look, don't worry about tomorrow. There's enough going on today. <laughs> today. Be thankful for your daily bread, you know? Okay. Let's, speak, let's wrap up in the Do you have something? Yeah, let's wrap up in the No, no, we good. We'll be right there down now. Go ahead, bro. But the house of Israel. But not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. Yeah, he was a clear example. He will not hearken unto us because they won't hearken unto him. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard hearted. They are hard hearted. Like you were saying, you were telling them. The Lord told us when we come to our people, they're going to be hard headed. They're not going to be with them. Go ahead. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their face. That's aggressive. Remember, the thing is, he felt, right he felt how you were speaking, uh, which, you know, another word for righteous uh, aggression is called seven. boldness, right? We're bold in the spirit. So he felt the boldness, and he wasn't, he was a little thrown off because, like you said, he was raised knowing if you hold the Bible as a Christian, you're a softy, timid beat. Yeah, that's why I'm so <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So he's like, hold up, how come you got the Bible? But you're oppressive. Well, because there is such a thing as righteous oppression. All right? There's no way in the Bible that it said if you're a man of the Lord. How are you going to be a man of the Lord at the same time you're going to be a beast? AKA, you're going to be a bitch. Nah, you got to have courage. Because this word, because of this word, you're going to be, you're going to be an outcast. And Esau, the government, going to want your head. You can't be no coward being a better look. Yeah, because the parts of wickedness make you do something good. Go ahead and read that. Ezekiel 2, verse 5. And they, whether they, whether they will fear or whether they will fall back. Yeah, they ain't made some stupid. You gotta find not just here on the higher end of the edge. Not just, not, not just to the truth. There might be certain knowledge that you have outside the truth to say, you know what, I'm not even gonna talk to you. 
for them. For they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there has been a prophet among them. Right, he's going to know that there has been a prophet among them. When is he going to know? When he's been hungry for three days. When the lights have been off. When he's been nowhere near this area for an extended period of time. When he's unfamiliar with, with the Appalachian Mountains. <laughs> you know yeah, you know what I'm saying? When he's putting into a predicament where it's like, all right, who the hell were they talking about on 7th and T? I need you right now. Please, the God of 7th and T. They're going to be saying the same stuff, just like that. That's why, I, I, what did I tell him? I said, yeah, higher, I'll hire the God of how it's shot. That's right. That's right. That's what we get praises to. Okay. So we're going to point out how to with these face the east. And give all praises to our power. Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, Bashem, and Copper Dash. All right, the name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. His name is Yahweh Shai, and Kaha Kadash is the Holy Spirit. That's the comfort of the God of the Lord. Shalom to the elect remnant, 144,000 and one third. That's the only people we care about on earth. Double honor to our elders and apostles. A great millstone who we hope and pray and we believe are part of that remnant. Double honor to you all the water for your labor and your work. Teachers out there and tell you, let's stay faithful, man, and strong. That's right. We're almost out of here. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.